If you are looking for a last epoch guide to dungeons without unnecessary fluff, then this video is for you. Last Epoch has 3 dungeons. While this number may seem very low, each dungeon is unique with its own team, mechanics and rewards. But all dungeons have something in common, the scheme. See, in every dungeon you explore a big area where you have to find one of the two available exits. Each exit offers perk unique to that dungeon and a boost to enemies' health and damage. You repeat this process of exploration twice and then have to face the dungeon's boss. Now, keeping that in mind, let's talk about each individual dungeon and their mechanics. First up, we have Lightless Arbor. The unique mechanic of this dungeon is a lantern-like crystal that helps you deal with ever-present darkness. The crystal has limited amount of light. The light resource depletes every time you get hit proportionally to the amount of health taken by you from that hit. You can restore the light resource by defeating large orange-ish crystals that you can find while exploring the dungeon. When you run out of light, you are basically screwed. The enemies deal way more damage, while taking significantly less damage from you when they are not lit by your crystal. The boss of Lightless Arbor has two phases. During the first phase, you cannot actually deal direct damage to the boss. Instead, this phase requires you to burn the kindlings that are located on each side of the area. First, you need to damage the wall protecting the kindling, and only then you can burn kindlings with your crystal being located near them. During that phase, mobs will spawn and boss will cast AoE attacks. After burning both kindlings, the boss will collapse and you will be able to access their heart. And here is where you can actually damage directly the heart of the boss, which is located in the middle of the area. This phase will revolve around avoiding two main attacks and dealing with mobs spawned by the boss. The boss's attacks are really simple in that dungeon. First we have AoE attack that requires you to stay close to the boss. Then we have a beam attack that you can dodge easily by moving to the other side of the boss. You know, like behind where the beam starts. There is also a third attack which is AoE in a cone shape in front of the boss towards you, so you better keep moving. When it comes to rewards, Lightless Arbor is basically a gold sink in Last Epoch. After defeating the boss, you get access to the vault room. At the door to the vault, you select which rewards you want to buy. The trick is that every time you select not to buy a reward, the next reward is more expensive than it would have been otherwise. There are few items which you can see right now on the screen which are unique to this dungeon and cannot be obtained outside of it. Next, let's talk about Soul Fire Bastion. The unique system of this dungeon is immunity barrier you have permanently on you. You can switch between barrier that prevents necro and fire damage taken. Soul Fire Bastion has therefore enemies and environmental hazards that deal either necro or fire damage. You can tell which damage type enemies are using by the colors. Green damage, necro. Red, fire. Utilizing this mechanic is not so crucial in lower tiers or when you are overpowered with your build. But on tier 4 of the dungeon, you have to utilize this mechanic correctly in order to stay alive. Soul Fire Bastion boss requires you to use the correct barrier as well. You should change barrier depending on the color of the floor. It always starts with fire damage. Besides the floor damage, boss will mainly cast a circle AoE which will shrink towards the boss. I recommend using teleport or other traversal skill to dodge out of the AoE and avoid the damage. The boss has few other attacks, but they are very easily avoidable. So focus on the color of the floor and AoE circle. Now, when it comes to rewards, Soul Fire Bastion has gambling based reward system. Killing enemies in the dungeon gives you souls, which can be exchanged to items at the end of the dungeon through gambling. Switching barrier types in the dungeon uses that soul currency, so the less you switch, the more you will save. And right now on the screen, you can see the list of items that are unique to this dungeon. Do note that the following free items are only obtainable through soul gambling system and are not part of drops from mobs nor from the boss. And lastly, we have the Temporal Sanctum. The unique mechanic of this dungeon is traveling between two different eras. Some areas of the map are inaccessible in one era with gates closed, 
while being open in the other alternative timeline. So basically you will often switch between era trying to find your way through the dungeon to one of the exits. Julra, who is Temporal Sanctum's boss, requires you to switch between eras as well to avoid the damage. Telltale sign for first era transition is screen white AoE. This attack takes a moment to charge, so you don't have to switch immediately. But don't wait too long or else you're gonna die. Once Yulra casts the attack, she will join you in another era. Next, she casts beams that spin in clockwise direction. You can dodge the damage by keeping your character in the gap between the beams as you can see on the screen. Defeating the boss grants us the most unique reward of all dungeons in Last Epoch, the ability to craft legendary items. Legendary item is a combination of unique gear piece plus exalted item. The legendary item preserves all the stats from the unique item and adds affixes from exalted piece. There are however few caveats and restrictions in this process. First, the unique item needs to have legendary potential, which indicates how many affixes it can copy from the exalted item. LP, as we call legendary potential, ranges from 1 to 4 LP. LP1 is quite common drop in the endgame while LP4 is extremely rare to drop. Furthermore, the exalted item needs to have exactly four affixes, and the affixes are the stats in the bottom part of your item description. The easiest way to tell how many affixes you actually have is looking at the small arrows located at the left and right borders of the item description. Also, both items have to be of the same gear type. For unique dagger, you need exalted dagger. And to close the topic of Temporal Sanctum, you can check right now on the screen unique dungeon items obtainable only in Temporal Sanctum. So that's all in this dungeon guide for Last Epoch. I hope it was a useful video for you. If you enjoyed it, I would highly appreciate if you drop me a like. And in case you want to see more of my videos in the future about Last Epoch and other games, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one.